Okay. Um, so we're going to start quadratics today. Uh, there's a lot involved with quadratics that you're going to have to learn. So we're just going to take it a little bit at a time. You are going to have to take some notes, some basic notes, and then we'll get further into it after that. But basic notes. What's quadratic? Well, first of all, a quadratic is a function. Remember we studied functions, and a function is something that will pass the vertical line test. And a quadratic is a function, and a quadratic looks one of two ways. A quadratic, when you put it in the graph, when you put it in the graphing calculator, it's gonna form a graph that either looks like a smile or it looks like a frown. Okay? It's either going to be a smile or a frown. Now, it may be real narrow. It may be real wide. And it could be anywhere on the graph. Like if I have a graph, that parabola could be up here. Or it could be down here. Or it could be over here. I mean, it could be anywhere on the graph. As long as it either looks like a smile or it looks like a frown. That's the way it looks. It will not look like a, a C or a, a backward C. That's called a hyperbola. You'll learn about that in math three. But a, a parabola, which is what the quadratic graph is called, and I'll write that in a minute, that either looks like a smile or it looks like a frown. That's the only two ways it can look. Now, there is a way to know what it's gonna look like without even graphing it. There's a way to know, is it going to be a smiley looking thing or is it going to be a frowny looking thing? And you can tell that by just looking at the equation. But let's talk about the equation. We're going to talk about standard form because that's the main form of a quadratic. You're always going to have to make sure your equation is in standard form. Beeson, the following students, to be two and one their present today. Nicholas Beeson, Tyler Cruz, Ashley Davis, Jessica Lee, Alondra Gallardo, Ashley Gallardo. And that's standard form. Joseph Harlow. AX squared plus BX. Candace Livingston. Plus C. Candace Livingston. Or excuse me, Livingston. Candace 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 Two x squared plus three x plus four. Could look like that. <clears throat> it could look like negative x squared minus two x plus eight. Could look like that. As long as it has a square, an x, and it doesn't always have to have an x or a c. It always has to have the square. So it could look like that's quadratic, just an x squared, just x squared, um, 2x squared. That's quadratic. As long as it has that square, it's quadratic. Doesn't have to have an x, doesn't have to have a c, but we want you, we want you to know what standard form looks like. Standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, the important thing about standard form is if you put your equation in standard form, then you should be able to identify what is your A, what is your B, and what is your C, and that's very important, very important. You have to know what is A, what is B, and what is C for many things we're gonna do. So we always have these three things, A equals, B equals, and C equals. With this example, and I'm gonna write example here, if I have negative x squared plus 3x plus 8, that's my example. A is whatever number is sitting in front of the x squared. What number is sitting in front of x squared over there? Negative. Say it again. Negative. negative 1. So my A is negative 1. What's sitting in front of the x? 3. 3, that's my B. My B is three. And the number at the end that has no variable is your C, in this case, is eight. So that's how you identify 
your A, B, and C. It has to be in standard form. Let me show you why I keep saying that. What if you have this function here? What if you have um, 2x squared equals 3x plus 6? That is not standard form because there's an equal sign right there. And you see up here with standard form, there's no equal sign. So that's not standard form. How do you think I can make that standard form? Yes. Move the three X over, move the six over. Take away three X and take away six. That would give me two X squared minus three X minus six. Now I can identify my A, B, and C. A equals two, B equals negative three, and C equals negative six. Is everybody following along so far with what I'm talking about? You gotta know standard form and you gotta know how to put it in standard form. Avoid moving the A term. Don't move the A term, move everything else to the A. But it might have been, some people might have said, well, I'm just going to move the 2x squared over there. No, don't do that. No. Because that, that, you'll see why shortly. Changes everything. you got to move these over with the A, with the A term. Now, I told you you could tell whether this graph is smiling or frowning just on the equation. And you can. So, I will tell you right now that this particular graph right here is frowning. And I can tell you right now that this particular graph right here is smiling. How would I know that? If A is positive, so you got to look at the A term. If A is positive, what do you do when you're positive? Do you smile or frown? Smile. smile. So if your A term is positive, your graph is smiling. If your A is negative, you're frowning. And that's how you can tell what this parabola is going to do. Now that's just what we call like a precursor into this unit. That's a, a, a big picture of quadratics. You're gonna have some handouts I'm getting ready to give you that we're gonna fill in that will um, give you even more insight and um, tell you about the parts of the parabola. And I'm gonna let you watch me. You don't have to write what I'm getting ready to do because I've got something for you that's already done. You're just gonna label it. But I just wanna kinda go over the parabola with you. So if we have a parabola that is smiling, we have a low point on the parabola because this is smiling. The lowest point is down here. Does this one have a low point? No, it, oh, it has a high point. This one has a low point, and this one has a high point. That's important because there's something called a max and something called a min. And depending on the, what it is, we'll t tell you whether it's a max or a min. So right here is what we call the vertex. So this one, it's right here. You don't have to write this down, just watch, okay? So my vertex on my smile is at the bottom. My vertex on the frown is at the top. A vertex is an X and a Y. Your vertex is a point. So the X and the Y are something. The X is known as the AOS, which is the axis of symmetry. And the Y is your max or min. In this case, it's your minimum point because it's a low point. Whereas here, your Y is a maximum. Does that make sense so far? Okay. So your vertex is an X and a Y. The X is the AOS, axis of symmetry. And what does that mean? Does, do you know what symmetry means? Do you know what symmetric is? Is our body symmetric? You don't think our body's symmetric? Some people's aren't. Well, not totally symmetric, but let's say somewhat symmetric. 
Unless you've had an arm cut off, you've got an arm on the left and an arm on the right. You've got a leg on the left and a leg on the right. You've got an eye on the left and an eye on the right, a nostril on the left and a nostril on the right. You have a lip that does this on the left and you have a lip that does this on the right. Our body is symmetric, it's supposed to be. You have eyebrow, eyebrow, eye, eye, I mean symmetric. Well, the AOS cuts something in half that makes it symmetric to each other. So if I, my body had an AOS, it would be right down the center, right here. That would be my AOS. So on the graph, my AOS is right down the center. Which if you take this and place it on the coordinate plane, what is this dashed line? What axes will that dashed line intercept? The x-axis. If this dashed line is going to intercept something, one of the axes, it's going to intercept the x-axis. And that's why your x in the vertex is your AOS. Does that make sense? It's all going to make more sense later. But this is just giving you an idea of what the parabola looks like and the parts of it. Now, a parabola not only has a vertex, and they all have a vertex, a parabola also has, I'm going to draw a coordinate plane anywhere right here, okay? Um, and I could draw one over there too, but um, and a parabola not only has a vertex, and they all have a vertex, but it also has a y-intercept. But they don't all have an x-intercept. Does this, go, does this go high enough to hit the x-axis? Doesn't. This will never have an x-intercept, but it does have a y. They all have a y. Ava? So the x on the positive one has a name, but the x on the other one has a name, or is it just x? On this one? Yeah. No, it's all the same. This, this x is also your AOS. Okay. I just didn't label it. They all, they're all the X's are AOS's and the Y's are your max or your min. In this case, the min, in that case, the max. And that's important because we're going to start doing word problems of projectile motion is what they call it. So if I take a ball and I throw it back there and she catches it, that ball is going to have a height. It's going to have a, some kind of a height unless I do. I don't know. I don't know that I could do that. Baseball players can, I guess. They do those straight shots that go straight to that that batter and a real good pitcher can and, and strike them out. But in most cases, when you throw something, it's going to have an arc to it, which has a maximum height. And your max or your min, which is the Y value in the vertex, is going to be that height. So if I say, well, how high did that rock get? And let's say my... Let's say that this was the graph of that ball being thrown, and let's say that my vertex was 5 and 7. And I said, okay, I'm throwing that ball, and I want to know how high that ball got. Which one of these are you going to call the height? Huh? 7, the Y value. The Y value is your max or min. Remember I said it right here? Max or min? So you only tell me the why. You don't say um, five seven. Where did I put that? At? Oh, you don't say five seven. No, no. Five is not the height of that ball. The y value is your height. So you'd say seven foot, maybe, whatever units we're talking about. What do you think the the five would be? The five is going to be how long it took at the time. In most cases, the the, the x value is your time. It took five seconds to get to her, but it reached a height of seven feet. So these really are kind of fun. These, um, these quadratics are kind of fun. Now, what is the graph called? It's called a parabola, not a parabola. Like some kids like to say, it's called a parabola and is spelled P-A-R-A-B-O-L-A, -A -A, parabola. That's what the graph of the quadratic, let me take notes, you should have taken earlier notes. Um, that's what the graph of the parabola is called.
okay? Now I'm going to give you some papers. This is a bad day to miss class. But hopefully that video, Ava, will help. Hand that back to her. No, both, both of them. Both of them. They go together. Here's yours. Okay. So, um, oops. You only got one paper? No, you got two. Oh, this. Hmm. It's weird. Why'd that get backwards? Okay. You will see on, let me take a picture of this. On your paper, they didn't have the standard form. They just wrote SA. So I added the standard form for you, which I've already given you actually. All right, so on, on your paper it said, um, it's, it's given you an, the steps in graphing a parabola. Tells you the first thing, sketch a graph of this equation. They want us to sketch the graph of that and they're gonna teach you how to do it. Step one, put in SF, SF is standard form. Well, isn't it already in standard form? Is that one not in standard form? No. I th why not? Oh, I see. What? Well, okay, it's allowed to say y equals, as long as that equals isn't in the middle of all that. So, yes, y equals is fine. It just can't have x squared equals, you know, 6x, whatever, whatever. So, y equals is allowed. So, yes, it's already in standard form. Now, it wants us to identify A, B, and C. So, y'all tell me, what is A, what is B, and what is C? To this equation right here. What's A? One. One. What's B? Eight. Perfect. And what's C? Eight. All right, we got that. That's important. Now, based on the value of A, does my parabola smile or frown? Smile. Smile. Smiles. So that means over here it says, is it opening up or opening down? It's opening up. Opening up. So this one opens up. Okay. Number two, you're going to plug into line of symmetry formula. This is the AOS, and you can write AOS on this. So we call it the axis of symmetry, AOS. And the formula is this right here. So you have to know what A, B, and C are in order to use that formula. So we're going to go ahead and use this formula. So we have X equals negative. What is B? Well, B is also a negative six. So that gives me a double negative over two times A and A is one. Are y'all with me? I'm just using a formula. You're gonna have to know that formula. So now I've got X equals double negative is positive. So it's six over two. So X equals three. So my three goes right here. X equals three. That is my AOS. I just found my AOS. Are you with me? Okay. So it's wanting me now, step three, to find the vertex. Well, my AOS is three, and it says to plug it into the equation, which they've written it for you, Here's your equation. They put your, they didn't put the x, because we're going to plug in what x is. But they put the square, minus 6, they didn't put the x, plus 8. They left the x out because we have to plug in what x is. And that's how we find the other part of the vertex. So we're going to plug 3 in for x. And that gives me a y equals 3 squared is 9 
minus six times three is 18 plus eight. And now I'm gonna have to use my um, order of operations and you go from left to right. Nine minus 18 is negative nine plus eight. So Y equals negative one. So now I know what Y is, it's negative one. Did you guys follow all that? Okay. Step four. Plot the vertex and create an XY table. Okay, well, first thing I want to do, first thing I would suggest you do is we're going to plot the vertex. We got three, negative one. So three, negative one is right here. We know that our AOS is three. So I know my imaginary line is right here. That's my imaginary line. I know my graph is gonna be smiling, so I know it's gonna go up from there. Okay, I know it's gonna be going up because I know I'm smiling. So I wanna grab a point over here. I wanna grab something over here, and I wanna grab something over here. So I'm gonna need, and it doesn't matter what number you pick really, um, what's it telling you to do? Plot the points you just found and connect the points to make a parent. Okay, we haven't done that yet. Find the other side of it. All right, so it's wanting you to use different numbers for X. You're going to plug them into the formula and find out what Y is. So let's do, let's do zero. So if I plug a zero in, Y equals, oh, X is zero. Zero squared minus six times zero plus eight y equals eight. So when x is zero, y is eight. When x is zero, y is eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about right here. Well, here's the cool thing about the line of symmetry. However many spaces over this way is that point, I can go the same amount of spaces over here to get another point. So I am one, two, three spaces over. Go one, two, three. I can put another dot right up here. Do you guys understand what I just did? Now I can sketch it. It's not going to be perfect, but I can sketch it. Well, there we go. Oh. Okay, it's not perfect, but it's a sketch. There's my graph. Can you always pick zero? You can. Zero's a good one to pick. And you only need a few points. Like, I only need to do this. I only got one point here. I was able to get an idea. But if they wanted me to be more exact, any I can pull any point. I can put an X is negative one. X is one. You don't want decimals. So if you see you're going to get a decimal, you want to kind of get away from that. It's too hard to plot those. But if I get a point over here, like the y-intercept, let's talk about the y-intercept. Your y-intercept is always your seed. So what's my y-intercept? Eight. Okay, that's what we just happen to do. Because when x is zero, y is eight, that's your y-intercept. Always pick your vertex and get your y-intercept, which is always your value of c. And if you have one point over here, find your line of symmetry, however many points or parts away from that, Go this far and you can do another point. So you can do two or three points on a really good graph. So that is how you would actually graph a um, parabola. Now, I want you to look at the back side of your paper. We're only gonna do a couple of those. I've got another paper coming your way. We're gonna do these shortly. We'll. Um, We'll do these after the fact. Look at, yeah, the back side of this one. Look at number one. Does it open up or open down? Open up. Open up. Opens up. Number two. Up. up. Number three. Down. 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 Number four. Down. Perfect. Y'all got it. You know what you're doing. Okay? Let me get the next paper for you, and then we'll go back to that in a minute. I think y'all are, y'all feel like you've got a handle of this? No. Nope. 
not that hard really, the beginning stuff. Okay, now we're gonna identify, I told you you didn't have to do all that writing when I was showing you the different parabolas because I was gonna give you something that's got it already written for you and we're gonna label it. All right, let's look at this paper here. All right, so they've got a picture of the parabola and they've got all these boxes. They want us to name all this stuff. So this box is pointing to this dashed line. What is that called? AOS, AOS axis of symmetry. This box is pointing to these two points. What do you think they would be called? They are the x-intercepts. There's other words for them. X-intercepts is one, but let's write them all because you have to be aware of all of them. And I'll tell you the most important one. One is x-intercepts. Another one that's really important, so I'm going to put stars. In most cases, you're going to hear them call them solutions. Called solutions. They're also called um, roots. Not as often anymore. They used to. Um, solutions is the big one. So you're going to be finding solutions to quadratics. And when I tell you to find the solution to a quadratic, you're looking for x-intercepts. That's what you're looking for. Okay? Now, this one is pointing here. What is that? Y-intercept. And then this one is pointing here. What's that? Vertex. What is it? Vertex. It is a minimum, but what else is it? Vertex. Vertex. So it's a vertex which contains the minimum on that graph. So it's a vertex, and it, it contains a minimum. It also contains an AOS. Okay. The shape of the parabola is described by the... What do they want you to put there? The shape of the parabola is described by the standard form. Of AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero. It doesn't have to have an equals, but could. When A is positive, the parabola is Opens up. Opening up. And has a minimum. When A is negative, the parabola is opened down and has a maximum. X-intercepts, they're the points on the X-axis. Do all parabolas have an X-intercepts? No. Don't have to. Mm -mm. They don't have to. But if they do, the X-intercepts are the points where the parabola crosses or touches the X-axis. To find the x-intercepts, and we're not going to be doing this until next week. To find the x-intercepts, factor the quadratic equation and solve for x. The solutions 
for the quadratic equation are the x-intercepts. So if I tell you to give me the solutions, you're looking for x-intercepts. So far, so good? Got a little handle on it? The AOS is a vertical line. The axis of symmetry is a, it should say an, is an imaginary line on the graph which divides the parabola in half. Both sides will be what? Symmetric or even. Both sides will be symmetric. The axis of symmetry falls exactly blank between the blank. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I don't know what to put there. I don't know what they want. The axis of symmetry falls exactly center. I'm not going to put anything there. For quadratic functions in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c, the AOS is found using the equation x equals negative b over 2a. That's how you find your AOS. The axis of symmetry also provides the, val the x value for the vertex. So the AOS is your x value in the vertex. Okay, the vertex. The vertex is the, mm, I'm going to call it max or min point. The maximum point or the minimum point, point for the parabola. Minimum when the graph is, okay, would it be minimum here or would it be minimum here? Which one would be minimum? Okay. This one, right? That would be your low point. So minimum, when the graph opens up, and max, when the graph is open down. The x value is also the x value for the vertex. To find the y value, Plug the x value into the quadratic function and solve for y. So far, so good, guys. Not too bad. Just the big picture of the parabola. Okay? The y-intercept. This is the point where the parabola crosses the y-axis. They all have a y-intercept. Uh, to find the y-intercept, plug x equals 0 into the quadratic function and solve for y. I should put y there. Now, the other thing is I'm going to put down here Note, the y-intercept is always c. Remember ax squared plus bx plus c? Your y-intercept is always c. You may not have a c there. You may have y equals 2x. So what would your y-intercept be, do you think? Zero. Sure, zero. Is this all making sense to you guys? That's good. Okay. Okay, on the first sheet that I gave you, on the back, let's go ahead and let's do one of these together, and then you're going to do the others. And 
you're going to finish the rest. Um, okay, so let's look at... Okay, so let's look at this one. First thing I need to do is I need to find my vertex. That's my highest or lowest point. I already know based on that equation, is it opening up or down? No. It's opening down, so I know it's gonna look like this. I need to find that highest point. So I'm gonna use my AOS first, number one. X equals negative B over, nope, number one. Let's change that. Number one, identify A, B, and C. Number one. Number one. A equals, what does A equal? Negative, negative three. three. What does B equal? Zero. Zero. What does C equal? Zero. Zero. Okay? So now, my equation, number two, I got to plug my, um, no, I got to use my AOS. X equals negative B over two times A. Well, negative zero, zero, so X equals zero. X equals zero. Dave, are you trying to find where I'm at? I'm on the back of that front page. Okay, so now I gotta plug now I gotta plug that zero into the equation. Y equals negative three times zero squared. Y equals negative three times zero, so Y equals zero. Ah, oh, my vertex is zero, zero. So right here is my vertex. So when X is zero, Y is zero. Now, let me see when X is negative one. Let me try negative one. When X is negative one, I gotta plug negative one in for the X. So I've got Y equals negative three times negative one squared. Y equals negative three times one because negative one times negative one is one. So Y equals negative three. So when X is negative one, Y is negative three. When X is negative one, Y is negative three right here. Well, this is my AOS right here, right? That's my AOS. So that means if I'm one point this way, I can go one point that way and put another dot. And I'm gonna try one more. I don't really have to, but I'm gonna try because it's giving me four spots. So I'm gonna try negative two. So we've got y equals negative three times negative two squared. Y equals negative three times four. Y equals negative 12. I don't have enough space on that graph. So I, I need to go to a different number. Actually, I don't. I don't think I'm going to find a number that I'm going to be able to graph. So I'm going to go ahead and graph it. So I can do my curve there, and I go down through here and down through here. It's not the most beautiful graph, but it's a graph. Do you guys know what I did? Everybody understands what I did? Okay, so I'm now going to leave you alone because you have all these others that you need to do. And you also have the other pages that go to this that you should be ready to do the um, your graph and these with standard form. Okay, look at number eight. Go on this page right here and find number eight. Okay, I want you to cross through it because you're not doing anything with that because you don't do any form but standard form. And it tells you to rewrite the following quadratic function from standard form to intercept form. We don't do intercept form in math one. You'll do that in math two. So we're not gonna do number eight. 
and you don't need to worry about number nine, eight or nine on that page. All the rest of them, you definitely, you're gonna have trouble with number 14. We'll do that together. 14 we'll do together, but all the rest of them you should be fine. Any questions? Everybody's good? Okay.